And welcome to this edition of ACAP Today for Monday, the 27th of April. I'm Jason Parent with the Arusta County Action Program. We're pleased to welcome you to our program today where we're going to launch into Community Impact Week. Uh, in just a little bit, we are going to introduce um, our guests who are working through a program called Assurance 16. It's part of the coaching work uh, that we do here at the Arusta County Action Program. And we'll be meeting with them in just a moment. But before we do that, as we start Community Impact Week, we wanna share with you as we always do on the program, some news and information that you can use uh, this week uh, and ways that we might be able to help you, especially if you're impacted economically by COVID-19. We begin by reminding you that if you are trying to get in touch with us, we certainly encourage you, um, as we are work most of our team is working remotely, to continue apply to consider um, going online to acap-me.org and logging in there um, at the bottom of the screen of the main page. You can see a portal uh, there that will allow you to type your information, write it, and help us help you uh, by connecting you with the appropriate services uh, that might be available to you depend, uh, dependent on the information that you do provide us with. So, so it's a ways that we can help you a little bit more carefully and closely as we reach back out to you once we hear from you. Secondly, we want to let folks know that the first time home buyer program that we spoke about with Greg Doak uh, a couple of weeks ago here on ACAP Today will be announcing this week uh, their program, their first program offering using Zoom as a platform. We'll be announcing that date a little bit later this week with Greg, so please tune back in uh, as we'll have more information on that available really soon. With low interest rates, now may be a great time to consider buying that first home. Speaking of places where folks live, the rental relief program, the COVID-19 rent relief program is available for renters who cannot afford to pay their rent due to circumstances related to the coronavirus pandemic. The program is designed to provide a one-time bridge payment of up to $500. Uh, that's until uh, the, the federal relief funds get to the individuals who need them at this point. If you are having difficulty paying for either April or upcoming May rent um, and have not already applied for the program, please go to mainhousing.org slash COVID rent. If you're unable to do that, please call us at 764-3721 and we will help you apply. We've uh, processed over 103 uh, applications, 103 applications at this point, and over $50,000 has been issued uh, to folks um, in the community community to landlords in the community to help pay uh, rent. The Women, Infant and Children's program as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic has some new eligibility guidelines and you may be eligible um, for that program to provide nutritious foods for families with uh, children, with young children in the home. Please do give us a call if you feel that you might uh, be eligible for this program or would like to know more, 764-3721. We're also helping folks with their IRS economic impact payments or stimulus payments. If you have not already received yours or do not have any information about yours coming in at this point, please do give us a call and we can help access those payments for you. We can work directly with you to apply online to access those programs. Uh, the Home Energy Assistance Program is another program that has some expanded guidelines to help individuals who are experiencing economic hardship as a result of COVID-19. Through the end of this week, that program will be available for households impacted by COVID-19. We're hoping there's an extension on this program, but we do have available appointments this week to serve individuals. If you feel like you need assistance, um, and remember the credit that goes on your bill will um, continue into the fall until that credit runs out. It will also help you pay for an existing bill if you have an existing a challenge with a bill that you need to pay as it relates to home energy assistance. So please do reach out to us if we can help you in this way. There's a couple of work sessions left on our workshop virtual uh, work, uh, workforce development workforce virtual workshops. Uh, this week, um, this Thursday, we're going to uh, present a workshop via Zoom on how to create the perfect resume. And then the following Thursday, May 7th, is interviewing tips. For more information or to register, contact Kathy Williams at her email address there on your screen. Uh, we also want to remind folks where one of our guests is coming to us today. Uh, Jeannie Fox is at the Wellness Shelter for Individuals Experiencing Homelessness, the Hope and Prosperity Wellness Shelter at the University of Maine at Presque Isle, a partnership of UMPI, ACAP, Maine Housing, and a number of others. Uh, we'll hear a brief update from her on how things are going over there, plus the new program she's talking about in just a minute. But if you or someone you know is experiencing homelessness, do reach out so we can help. 
Uh, we want to remind folks of one of the programs that our partner agency, the Northern Lighthouse, is providing uh, information on. If you have a sub challenge with substance use disorder or any other challenge in this particular time, please do give them a call at 540-1522 and see what services might be available to help you at this time. We want to also remind folks that the 2020 census is going on amidst all of the activity that is going on otherwise. Uh, please do visit 2020census.com uh, and make sure that you are counted. We were not quite at 50% um, as of last week when we reported this to you. Uh, so please do consider if you have not already registered for the census to do so. Uh, we'll, in the last couple of items we want to remind you of is Head Start registration for the fall. Head Start and early Head Start registration is now open. Please do give us a call at 768-3045 if you would like to see if you qualify and we can register your preschool age child for our Head Start program. And lastly, before we introduce our guests, we are currently planning a uh, planning uh, is underway for a summer Head Start program here in Aroostook County. Uh, this will be specifically to help meet the needs of families families who have been displaced uh, from Head Start in classroom sessions uh, this spring due to COVID-19. So more details to come on this worthwhile program in the coming days and weeks. And now please join me uh, as we welcome to our program uh, Jeannie Fox who's joining us as I indicated from the Hope and Prosperity Wellness Center. Jeannie welcome to ACAP today as a repeat uh, uh, guest on this program. Nice to have you. Hey Jason. And thank, thank you to Michelle Clark. Uh, Michelle is one of the individuals who Jeannie's been working with through the Assurance 16 program. Michelle, it's great to have you as well. Thank you. Before we get to you, Michelle, I want to get uh, to Jeannie to just find out before we launch into our discussion today, how are things going at the Hope and Prosperity Wellness Shelter? Yeah, things are going really well, Jason. Thank you for asking. We currently have six residents that are staying with us. Um, we are now, let's see, we are Last Friday would have been our second week that we were open, so we're beyond the two weeks. Um, several residents have come and gone, and we actually have a family that will be moving into a new home tomorrow as a result of coming to our shelter and working with us here. So that's exciting news. That is wonderful. That's great to hear because it is a temporary wellness shelter and we're helping to get people housed. We're helping with employment and education. I know you've done some work with adult education as well, so great things happening there. So Jeannie, let's talk about what we call here uh, at the agency Assurance 16, but is one of the many coaching programs that we offer. Uh, talk about what happens in this particular uh, coaching work and about some of the work that you do with Michelle and other uh, individuals in this program. Yes, a, um, Assurance 16, we, we shorten it and call it A16. Um, and it's for families that um, qualify for HEAP, fuel assistance. And, um, what we're able to do as coaches is we meet with the families and we start working on budgeting, ways to save money. And a big part of budgeting is ways to save energy. Um, so we work on conservation. Um, one of the first things that we do is um, we get a kit for the family, a home repair kit. Um, and Michelle was awesome with her kit. She, um, we're a little um, challenged right now because of social distancing. So um, the kit was dropped off to Michelle. I told her I was coming. I knocked on the door and I dropped it off and she picked it up. Um, and through telephone conversations, we were able to um, talk about what needed to be done with the kit. Um, and then she has sent, sent me the pictures of what was done with the kit. So we were able to um, do what we needed to do with a little bit of imagination there. Um, so so that kit that was dropped off from Michelle was um, ways to help save energy in the home. Um, a weather strip, a power cord strip, there was a low flow shower head, um, there's some plastic to put on the windows. Um, all ways to save your energy um, in these long cold winter months. Um, so Michelle was able to do that. Um, also with, um, with within our program we're able to offer um, incentives towards their light bill. So once they do a certain amount of lessons, then they get $175 paid towards their light bill. And that's something that can happen three different times through the year. So um, we've got, um, Michelle was able to already cash in on one of those incentives. Um, and as we continue to work, she'll cash in on the other two. So that's um, the big part of um, this is learning to save money, learning to conserve energy and, um, it seems to be going pretty well. Sounds like it's 
perspective. So Michelle, talk to me about how, how the work with Jeannie has helped you and your family um, in your household. Oh, I don't even know where to start. Um, before Jeannie was even a coach, she helped me in a lot of ways just because my older son was at ACAP and she helped me through that whole process because he has special needs and it was my first experience. Um, since my second son has started ACAP, we've done, like she said, the budgeting, the home heating kit. Uh, um, she's helped me keep my youngest son active at Head Start. And she's also steered me in the direction of getting a new job. Oh, so tell me, tell me about that. How's that going? Well, if the COVID wasn't happening, I would be starting by now. Right now we're on hold due to COVID-19 and we are hoping to start training soon. Excellent. Very proud of you. So tell me about um, what this has meant. I mean, it used, from the sounds of it, and as it's intended to be, this has engaged your whole family, your children, and, and you are, are working with Jeannie and, and, it's, and it's beyond energy conservation. You've, you've done some great things on household budgeting. Your children have seen some milestones happen and you're, you're looking to go to work. Um, this is all fantastic. So yeah. what has it been like for you? It's, it's been very exciting for all of us. Uh, the boys, both of them have loved ACAP, the staff, their friends. And I, I'm excited to be able to give back to ACAP that has helped me so much because my new position will be with ACAP. That's wonderful. Well, we're, we're pleased that we're anxious to welcome you to our team. Uh, Jeannie, when you hear um, Michelle speak, and I know that you've worked, you know, you just um, recently transitioned in the last several months to the role of being a coach, but Michelle has pointed out that you work with, you worked with children for a number of years through our early care and education centers before becoming a coach. So this work is really, um, it's in your blood and it's part of who you are. When you hear uh, folks like Michelle talk about the, the gains that they've made, that must, that must be especially meaningful to you. Oh, definitely. This is, Michelle's family is, is one of our um, success stories. Um, and we have many of them, but it's just wonderful. I'm so excited that she'll be joining our ACAP family. Um, and it's just a, it's a wonderful um, career move for her to be moving into this new position. And um, it means a lot for her and her family. Very excited. So talk to me about um, if, if, if you, I was out there and in, enrolled in the Home Energy Assistance Program, what were some of the things that you worked on with Michelle that I could expect um, that you would be able to offer for my household? Um, when I first started working with Michelle for this program, we just sat down and we talked about um, what was going on in her life. Um, and then, you know, she shared with me that she needed, was looking for full-time employment. Um, so we started talking about, well, what would you like to do? Um, but also in regards to the A16, we talked about how can we save money? What can we do here? So um, definitely I did home visits with her, checked out her house, and we talked about what she already was doing. Um, and, and she shared that she was doing some of it already, the banking of the house she knew about. Um, and she works with the boys about turning the lights off. Um, it's hard with little boys, they like lights on, but um, it, she was already doing some of what needed to be done. But we just talked about the importance of conserving energy. Um, we talked about maybe turning the water heater down a little bit. I um, mean, that was something that, oh, well, that would really be easy to do. So um, just with each family, I go in and I meet with them and, and find out what's already happening. And then we grow on that, we expand. And Michelle, that, um, that work, um, those conversations with uh, Jeannie, um, the, how, how, did, how did you and the boys, how were the boys in, engaged? Because the boys obviously had to be involved in this process too. It's been trying to make sure that they keep the light on. And all I'll have to say now is, oh, I see a light on. Oh, I'll get that, Mama. I'll get that. <laughs> so they'll run or behind me, Mama, you left a light on. So they've, <laughs> they've caught on pretty quickly to you know, making sure that we shut the lights off, that we don't run the water while we're brushing our teeth or anything that would make the, you know, in the bathtub, I'll run the water. They don't touch it. That way they're, they're safe for one. And two, they're not wasting the energy to do that. 
Um, and we've gotten into the habit of opening more curtains and making it brighter in here so we don't have to use lighting, which we're lucky right now that it's actually sunny out. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to me about that. Uh, Jeannie indicated that um, you had received the energy kit, but obviously because of um, COVID-19, we weren't able to go in and, and help advise and install. So what are some of the things that you've been able to do um, with the boys to, to, to make the house a little bit more energy tight? When it gets colder out, we um, have the light blocking curtains that help with that um, keeping the heat in, but they've also helped me put the plastic on the windows. They've since helped take it off. Mm -hmm. They um, make sure that they help me do the power strip. They watched as I did it. Um, they watched as I, I showed them the difference between the, the outlets where you put the covers in. Mm -hmm. So the breeze that it reduces it they helped me with that um they had helped me put up the plastic outside for the skirting and stuff and helped me take it off um what my youngest learned how to use a hammer and pull pull the nails out of the <laughs> out of the house um that's about that's about what they helped with wow and so the other work that you've done with Jeannie too has has been impactful to you and she helped you um in your in your job search and that's that's turned out to be successful um what is the biggest lesson that you and the boys uh, or you hope that the boys take from all of the work that you and Jeannie have done together and that you really have championed for yourself the biggest thing is i want them to be able to help themselves but also help others um, there's just, just by doing little things, it makes a big difference. Certainly. Helping, helping their grandparents in the yard work, you know, little things like that. And I want it, I want them to know that they can help and that there is help available for them as well. That's fantastic. That's a great lesson to teach the kids. And Jeannie, you, um, as you look at the program, you work with a number of uh, clients in mostly in central Aroostook, I believe, because we have other coaches working in other parts of the county. Um, what would you say to folks who are, who are considering uh, this and the journey that Michelle's been through and, and uh, the opportunity? Um, Jason, the first thing we do with the family is we, um, we sit down and talk with them and, and we meet them where they are and we go from there. Um, we can meet a family and they can tell us, you know, I'm, strag I'm having a hard time with several different areas, but they might not want to work on all of those areas at the same time. So we need to ask them, what do you want? What can we do to help you? And we go from there. Um, so definitely if we have any families out there that think that they could benefit from working with the coach, give us a call at the main office and we'll um, see who we can hook them up with. Um, we're out there and we really want to be working with families. That's a very good point because oftentimes that, that first step can be overwhelming in the thought of all of that, all that may need to be done, but it is, it's, it's very much led by the individuals and families that you're working with, isn't it? Yes. Um, and so the wonderful support that you provide, and uh, I guess I'd, I'd ask in, in, in our final comments here before we leave you, uh, for, for you both to um, give any final thoughts that you have either on the A16 program or, or, or anything else that you'd like to talk about, your coaching work, um, and then your advice um, for people. I've sort of been asking my guests what their advice for people out there in coping with COVID-19 and, um, and making it through this period where we can't be uh, as connected as we probably would like to be. So Jeannie, let me start with you. Um, I'm just going to restate what we hear time and time again. We are all in this together. Um, so it's um, just... If you need help, please reach out and um, reach out to your neighbors to see how they're doing. Reach out to your families. Um, and we're all in this together. Great. Thank you, Jeannie. And Michelle, any last thoughts about the program that you've participated in and what your advice is to others? I would say don't be afraid to take the first step. Um, a lot of people are, are too nervous about asking for help, especially people that don't usually need or want help. Um, let let someone help you. This is a trying time. Um, it's new for all of us. Accept that there's help if you need it. Um, don't don't strap yourself too much, but also connect with your family and friends and make sure everyone else is doing well as also. 
some great advice from the both of you. Thank you both uh, for joining me on ACAP today. And Michelle, thank you for uh, being our first guest uh, with Jeannie in Community Impact Week to share with us uh, the impact that uh, the work that we're doing throughout Aroostook County is having and looking forward to welcoming you to being a part of that team to make an impact on the lives of others. And, uh, and thank you for teaching your boys to understand the importance of giving back. Thank you, Jason. We will uh, chat with you, I'm sure, soon, uh, Michelle, when we get on the other side of this and you officially join our team. So, uh, but for now, before we leave you on ACAP today, I wanted to share just uh, a last uh, couple of things that we typically share with you first. Uh, Jeannie mentioned about staying in touch and the fact that we are in this together. One of the ways that you can uh, get help or give help is through aroostookcommunity.com. It's the one-stop shop, the one place to go uh, if you are looking for assistance in some format or if you would like to help others. Uh, you do need to log in to get onto the site, but it's a very easy and no-cost login. If for whatever reason you can't log in or have any issues and can't access the computer, call us at 764-3721 and we will navigate it for you, uh, including being able to provide assistance to you over the phone directly. And and we also want you to keep in touch because as Jeannie pointed out, we are in this together. Keep in touch with ACAP. Uh, look at us, look us up online at acap-me.org. Uh, email us at acap-info at acap-me.org. Call us at 764-3721 or check us out on YouTube where you can see past editions of this show, ACAP Today, and other wonderful um, documents or other wonderful videos performed by our members of our team, including story time. Um, and some uh, wonderful prevention uh, episodes that are there on YouTube. And also keep up to date with us on Facebook where we post all of our latest information. And finally, as we do each day um, on ACAP Today, we end with our snapshot of the day. This is uh, Dave from our ACAP IT team preparing one of the many laptops to ensure our team is able to connect with each other and the individuals and families that we serve. I believe these laptops here are headed down to Holton uh, tomorrow where they will serve families uh, through our center down in Holton so that children and can participate remotely in some of the learning and teaching activities that are happening uh, through that center, uh, but other computers are being provided through other centers as well. And that is um, ACAP today for today, the 27th of April. I'm Jason Parent. Thanks, a special thanks to our guests, Jeannie Fox um, and Michelle Clark for being our first guest on Community Impact Week. We'll be back with another episode and other special guests tomorrow. Until then, have a great rest of your day.